Good morning, everybody. Well, hmm, today is day, let me see, what day is it today? It's the 5th of December. It's around 7 a.m. Uh, sun just came up. However, it's gray and cloudy out there. Uh, so there is a sunrise. It's just not happening here. A little bit of snow last night, fresh snow. Temperature about minus 3 degrees Celsius, around 26 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a little chill in the air this morning. Uh, we're leaving my home community of Wasaga Beach here in Ontario, Canada. We're heading west. We're heading to the base of what we call Blue Mountain, which is a Niagara Escarpment. So from there, we're going to make the ascent to the top of Blue Mountain, and then we're going to connect with the Bruce Trail. We're going to make a left turn and head south on the Bruce Trail to a little spot that I want to photograph yet once again. We photographed this location before, which is the Silver Creek, but with a little bit of fresh snow um, around that creek and amongst the trees, it might be quite interesting. Also, on the way to Silver Creek, as we make the ascent up Blue Mountain, there's a barn. Again, we've shot the barn before, but I think today it could be very interesting, especially with an absolutely beautiful kind of deep gray characteristic backdrop uh, of the gray sky. I think that's going to be nice. Okay, let's hope the wind doesn't pick up too much and kind of blow all this beautiful snow off the trees um, because then it starts to look a little more of a dirty kind of look than a, a beautiful crisp winter scene or a winter wonderland kind of look, which is what we're looking for today. So, okay. We're heading out of Wasaga Beach, heading towards Collingwood. Hey, let's get to it. So as we're approaching, getting closer to the base of Blue Mountain, unfortunately, we're seeing less and less snow. This does happen living on the uh, shoreline of the Great Lakes here in Ontario. Um, snowfall depends on how the winds are coming off the lake. Um, I have seen many times, not just on occasion, but many times, a location, say where I live, might have had six inches or even a foot of snow 10 miles down the road. They got absolutely nothing. There is snow here where we are as we approach the mountain, but there's less. Um, and there's not as much in the trees as I was kind of hoping for. However, we are here. Uh, so we're going to make the best of whatever this particular day has to offer. Um, we can always come back, and we will. Um, winter time in Ontario is amazing uh, for photography, and especially the locations uh, that we're going to. Um, just amazing. So we will be back many times. But having said that, let's still make the most out of today's activity Let's see what we can find. Um, maybe we can find some pockets of, of deeper snow and maybe snow that's clinging to the trees. We're gonna take a look at the barn as we talked about. We're also gonna take a good look at Silver Creek. Um, so hey, it's okay. Not all is lost as of yet, any. It'll be fine, I'm sure. Just not as interesting as I was hoping for. But let's go see what we can find today. Hey, by the way, Gary here, Gary Klein Photography. Welcome for joining me today. Welcome to my channel. It's a beautiful day, anyhow. 5th of December, as I've said, Christmas is coming. Oh, I hope everybody's having a safe and happy kind of holiday season. Um, and I hope Santa Claus, Father Christmas, I hope he's good to you all when he comes. But anyhow, Today, well, it's all about winter photography. Let's go. We've started the climb up the Niagara Escarpment uh, to the summit of our Blue Mountain. Okay, so 
as you can see, we have snow. We knew there'd be snow. I was just hoping, as I said earlier, for a little more. Um, but that's okay. Like we've mentioned, we're gonna work with whatever we get today. A ways up this trail, we're gonna come to our first location that we want to shoot today, which is the barn. Again, we've shot this barn before. Beautiful location under the right conditions with the right snowfall or the fall colors. They're beautiful here. Uh, and the right light could be a stunning image. Today, who knows? We have a beautiful, deep uh, gray, very characteristic kind of backdrop of the sky. I like that very much. Lots of character in there. Okay, let's get going. The first location, the barn. Now, we have snow on top of the barn, of course. We have snow to the left. We have snow in the foreground. Uh, to the right of the barn is the trees. When those trees have collected snow on their branches, they look absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, as you can see, they don't have that snow this morning. Uh, I guess there was enough wind. There's no wind right now. But I guess there was enough wind uh, to make it just not uh, the snow not stay or not stick or it just got blown off. Unfortunate because it can be such a beautiful location. But what we are seeing is the actual barn looks great with the gray, gray backdrop. So we're going to set up um, and we're going to see what we can do today. Yeah, but before we do that, let's just go take a closer look at that barn. set upon the tripod. I'm sure you cannot see the image in the back of the screen. I know that. But that is what we're looking at directly ahead of us. We have the barn located in the left vertical third, right at the intersection with the lower horizontal and the left vertical line. Uh, falling into play, falling into pattern, if you will, for the rule of thirds. Beautiful snow in the foreground with the fence uh, running from left to right. Okay, gorgeous gray backdrop. The trees to the right. We have a two second timer set. Uh, a focal length of 40 mil ISO 200. We're shooting in film simulation Velvia. One 125th of a second shutter speed. Two second timer. 
first selection of images for the day. Wow. Well, ha. Yeah. You know what? Sure, I would very, very, very much like snow on those trees, but we do not have that snow. However, we still have a beautiful winter uh, country image. Um, and you know what? Yeah, it, it's good. Um, sure, it's not a long way, it's a long way from perfect. Sure, it's not an award winning kind of location or shot, but it's a great place to be today. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're gonna fool around with this image just a little bit more because I really, really, really do like gray, especially with snow, just especially with snow because it's so so it just works so well together it's almost like chocolate cake and ice cream i mean it just goes so well together okay let's try some different focal lengths let's try a couple of different compositions and see what we can work with here see what we can do everything basically remains the same but we have a focal length of 55 mil and we're going to take one image we have one image at 55 mil we're going out a little bit to about 45 mil focal length we have one image out a little bit more to about 35 mil one image we're just kind of going through the range of focal lengths of my 18 to 55 mil lens that I'm using this morning and why not indeed all the way to 18 mil there it is so all the way through all the way through our focal ranges from the 18 to 55 mil or in this case from the 55 mil to 18 gives us things to work with uh things to play with different perspectives perspectives if you will yeah hmm. i'm going to take a look through this farm field along this absolutely gorgeous snow. The snow's only about four or five inches thick. But we're just taking a look at the barn, just from a different kind of perspective. Uh, just looking at um, options as far as composition is concerned. Because who knows? By the way, I don't know if you can see these in the snow, but what you're looking at right there, those are the local uh, <laughs> deer tracks. Um, a lot of white-tailed deer here in Ontario, and especially right here. Um, yeah. But what happens is the ground raises, and as the ground raises where I am, the barn lowers, and it lowers. It just goes too low, and I just don't like that. Okay, you know what? We're going to back towards the fence line where we actually were, where we shot the original images. We're going to pack up and we're going to carry on climbing the escarpment, the Blue Mountain, uh, till we hit a left turn on the Bruce Trail. And that's going to take us to the Silver Creek, which is our next and final kind of part of call this morning. Um, yeah. So let's pack up from here. Oh boy. Yeah, let's back up from here and let's get going. <laughs> because, because even though I have my kind of winter photography gear on, when you are stood in one location, it does get cold quickly. When you're hiking up the escarpment, well, not so much. Okay, let's pack up. As the climb progresses up the escarpment, uh, in fact, just take a look. Take a look at the trail ahead. What we have here it's a small summertime only kind of gravel lane, if you will, uh, through the top of the escarpment. Um, in the winter time, it becomes unpassable. But as you can see, there's still quite a bit of snow here, and we are starting to see a collection of the snow collecting on the trees, on the branches and the trunks. Those we have now ascended a thousand feet uh, higher than where we were. Uh, when we were taking the shots of the barn. Uh, still a bit of a ways to go to reach the top, but we are getting there. 
and it is a challenge um, it's always a challenge especially when you're carrying a full camera pack on your back which is probably around 25 pounds worth of gear two camera bodies selection of lenses tripod drones f filters uh, and so on uh, but still all the tools we need but yeah take a look through the forest now lots lots more snow uh, it's surprising how much difference a thousand feet of elevation makes a lot more snow on the ground here what was four or five inches below is now seven inches up here yeah but we are getting there for sure take a look behind and you can see Georgian Bay way 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 in the distance yeah by the way by the way for those of you who didn't know please check out my second YouTube channel trail name Jasper now some of them you some of you may know I am a avid kind of long distance through hiker and that's one of the reasons I'm gone for such long periods of time without uploading videos to my photography channel because I'm on a long distance trail at those particular times uh, this summer for instance I hiked here in Ontario the Oak Ridges Trail which was 270 kilometers and then I left to hike the Colorado Trail which is 800 kilometers over the top of the US Rockies absolutely amazing uh, so please check out my hiking channel it's called trail name Jasper on YouTube do check it out let me know what you think I found for me hiking and landscape photography just kind of go hand in hand uh, because to capture the landscape image quite often you have to hike miles up the side of mountains through the wilderness through the forest down the country lanes and so on uh, just to find that uh, image so again for me hiking and landscape photography just goes hand in hand it's all one in the same a good pair of boots to a landscape photographer are just as important as a good camera body or a good lens just a part of the equipment part of the gear part of the tools that a landscape photographer will use for sure I know I do okay let's keep making our way towards the summit as we come off the country road the country gravel road or lane we enter into the trail itself and what we're seeing is pretty much virgin snow through this trail which means uh, that no one has been down here yet uh, today which is good it is a popular trail um, but the fact that we have virgin snow means we may have virgin snow when we get to the Silver Creek which is about a mile or so from here along uh, essentially a forest trail this bit right here is a little bit of a logging road if you will a logging trail uh, I've seen uh, the odd tractor up here in the summertime uh, clearing some brush and so on so I guess um, the landowner here keeps this open for whatever reasons to service his property maybe but anyhow again virgin snow this morning the only thing that's been on it is maybe some wildlife I'm seeing some uh, semi-covered tracks of deer and also coyote um, muddy temperatures not in fact deer tracks right there climbing up into the forest to my right and what's this this is something smaller that looks like fox that could be a fox track going through there so we definitely have the wildlife here um, looks like rabbit here yeah yeah we definitely have the wildlife here but I tend to be making way too much noise and again I'm not particularly a wildlife photographer although there is a gentleman by the way I want to mention his channel uh, Scott Tilly an English gentleman wildlife photographer check him out on YouTube he's got an excellent um, uh, YouTube channel and he's talked about lots of things over the years photography related but 
he's big into uh, wildlife photography if that's your calling do check him out Scott Tilly photography on YouTube take a look at his channel yeah uh, I enjoy his channel okay let's keep going down this trail again one of the virgin snow um, for about a mile or so and let's get to Silver Creek Hopefully, nobody has been down there by the time we get there. But we'll see. Again, sometimes it can be quite busy. The sun's come out, by the way. You can probably see that from the light on the trail ahead of us. Uh, the shadows and the, and the light. Um, so, hey, that promises to add uh, interest, anyhow, into an image. Uh, we're going to be shooting... Um, a water scene so it tells us a polarizer although I think today once we get down there the Sun right now is about 30 degrees to my left uh, a polarizer for maximum benefit maximum polarization works um, at its best performance 90 degrees uh, to the lens uh, it's gonna be oh when we set up, it's going to be past the 90. So we're coming the other way around the azimuth dial. It's going to be about 45 to 50, maybe 30, somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees uh, to the rear of me off the left side. Uh, so we are going to get some polarization effect from that, but not maximum polarization, but a polarizer we will definitely be using today. Just because we are shooting a water scene. Uh, with rocks there's going to be glistening along those rocks from the moisture so the polarizer will help to reduce the glare it will also help reduce light a little bit uh, so that makes us think about our circular ND filters we will be using a circular ND filter most probably to get a shutter speed of well you know what you never can tell what the optimum shutter speed will be but I find around somewhere between one to two seconds one and a half second is quite sufficient um, to give you a little bit of a nice silky look to the water without turning it milky white um, so hey these are things again we think about as we're approaching the scene uh, the equipment we're going to use, how we're going to set up and why we're going to use particular equipment such as the polarizer or the circular ND filter and so on um, I choose circular ND filters simply because I find for my Fujifilm system it simply works best it's convenient um, I like it I have a selection um, I could, they're stackable and I find them really, really, really uh, excellent at not offering a, col a color contrast um, uh, to the image. So I just like them. Um, and I use Corbin, the, the company name, brand name is a Corbin filter that I use. But again, that's just me. A lot of people use Nessie. I know, and I would use Nessie. A lot of people use Lee filters. Um, but Corbin made the ones that I were interested in, the circular ND filter, is a price I thought was reasonable and gives me a great deal of performance. Okay, more wildlife tracks here. Uh, now these ones, what are they? I'm going to say they're, well, you know what, that could be deer, I think. Yeah, I'm seeing the two points. It's difficult uh, sometimes to tell because, again, I'm not a wildlife expert, that's for sure. Okay, let's babble and let's keep going here. We're just descending down uh, to the actual Silver Creek itself along the trail. Um, I can hear the water, that's for sure. Uh, and I can now see the footbridge, although again, it's covered in snow, virgin snow, I think. Anyhow, we'll see. See, there is a parking area at the other side of this trail. Uh, closer probably to this creek so some people do park there and walk down to this creek and I'm seeing some signs of footprints but anyhow that's not important we've got some beautiful snow on the trees 
Oh yeah. So we've got that. Take a look at that snow through there. Yep, we've got some snow on the trees. So that's perfect. Just arriving at the footbridge. Okay. Taking a look to our left, down the Silver Creek. But what I find more spectacular is looking upstream. Look at that. Silver Creek, here we are. Yes, indeed, folks. Yes, indeed. Okay. Let's figure out a composition. Let's get the tripod set up, the camera mounted. And let's just take a little look and see what we're going to do here today. Okay. Tripod down low. Now, interesting enough, very chaotic it's what we're looking at um and above the actual creek itself um there's almost too many uh branches with snow <laughs> in fact if the tree to the left wasn't there just the one to the right it would be perfect but you know what it is what it is what it is okay we have the polarizer on i have a four stop circular nd filter on um, it's giving me, at maximum polarization, I have a shutter speed of one and one-sixth of a second. Um, an f-stop of f-14. I am at my widest angle focal length that I can get on my 18 to 55 mil lens, so I'm at 18 mil. I have a two-second timer set. Let's capture the first series of images. There we go. Hey. First series of images in the bag. Now, I was thinking of going with my 12 mil wider lens. But then I thought to myself, you know what? How about something a little more intimate? So I may change to my uh, 55 to 200 mil long lens. And I'm going to see if I can maybe a rock with some snow on it and a little bit of water or, a, or a, a log at the side of it. That might be something interesting. Let's reconfigure, let's change lenses, let's see what else we can do with this particular location, with this image. Okay, we've mounted our 55 to 200 mil lens. We have the same polarizer. We have the four stop circular ND filter. We have a two second timer set. Much more intimate at 135 mil. What have we got? Well, we have F14, we have ISO 200, and we have a shutter speed of one and one third seconds. Two second timer set. Let's collect a series of images. There we go. A series of images. Wow. You know what? absolutely loving this location always have not too too far from my home it's about a, an hour's hike back to the car from here but i want to go up into the hills just up here just up here um, because i think this creek bends to the right and i want to go take a look see what's there okay Let's pack up from here, let's move up there, let's just take a little peek, just for the heck of it, same way here, you don't know unless you take a look. Okay. Well guys, I decided not to explore along the creek line and into those hills, only because uh, more people started arriving from that uh, other side, kind of nearby parking area. So we decided just to turn around at that point and head back. Uh, we've come off the trail now, back on to uh, the kind of summer uh, country lane, if you will. Um, so it's about an hour hike from the river or from the creek back to where we parked, which is fine. You know what? Thank you so much for joining me today. I, myself, have had a blast. I hope you've enjoyed being with me too. Don't forget to check out my hiking channel, Trail Named Jasper. And please like, share, comment, do subscribe. Um, Something I would like to know, because I was a cannon shooter, as you know, for years. Um, I know a year and a half, two years ago now, I switched to Fujifilm. But I would like to know what everybody else is using as far as cameras and 
their favourite lens or their lens of choice for that camera. As far as an everyday kind of go-to lens is concerned. So please put those comments below. I'd love to know what others are using. Um, hey, let's sit back. Let's have a cup of coffee as always. Maybe a hot chocolate today because it's chilly out. And let's take a look at some images that we captured today. Let's do that. <laughs> 